Hello, my viewers. This is Wednesday. And why I'm saying this is Wednesday is because it's just, just a few days before Good Friday and Easter Sunday weekend. Uh, this week, I've been dealing basically on issues that have to do with the seven reasons or the seven ways in which Jesus shed his blood uh, before he went on the cross and even by the time he was going to the cross and even at the cross. And I'm also giving you the reasons as to why every single one of those moments, the blood was shed. I've already dealt with four ways in two other videos, Monday and Tuesday. Please get hold of it. And that is going just to bless you. You're going to enjoy yourself as you look that. I want you to understand that why Jesus did what he did was not just so because of us going to heaven eventually, but why he did what he did is because of our daily living, our day-to-day -day living in terms of our health, in terms of our prosperity, in terms of our relationships, in terms of everything that has to do with us. Now, today, I'm going to talk about three other ways. I've done two, two in the other previous videos, but I'm going to talk three other ways and to why he shed his blood. And then I'm going to mention to you as the understanding I get as to the reason why that happened. Now, they pierced his hands, his feet, and his side. These are the last three ways we see Jesus shedding his blood. They pierced his hands, they pierced his feet, and they pierced his side. So the question is, why did that happen? And why did blood need to come out of those particular areas, the feet, the hands, and the side? Now, allow me to read in the book of Psalms, chapter 26 and verse 16. Now, remember what I've told you in previous videos, that these things that were happening, each of those things were actually prophesied way before. So that basically means these were not just happening for the sake of happening. They were happening for a particular reason and for a divine reason. God already had already staged the show even before the show had come up he had already made men and men of god and prophets of god in those earlier days to see that day and prepared the people realizing that as these things happen they'll be happening because of this particular reason now in psalms 22 verse number 16 the bible says for dogs have surrounded me now this is in the spirit, David is seeing Jesus. He says, dogs have surrounded me. What are dogs doing? Dogs were trying to, to come across so that they may be able to lick the blood and lick the flesh that was all over. It was a messy situation, by the way. You know, it's not like what we see. Sometimes I see some of the pictures we display of Jesus or display some of the movies we display with Jesus having a drop of blood and, you know, some droplets of blood. And, you know, it's just like a nice little thing that has been put. Listen to me. The whole scenario was a tragedy. Today, if we were to be showing something of that scenario, would be calling it maybe adults only or R-rated. We would R-rate it, the whole show, because of how dramatic it was, how tragic it was, how traumatizing it was because of the kind of a thing that was going on. Imagine this man who has, the beards have been plucked off. Imagine this man who is having thorns on his head that are all plugged in. And then imagine this man who has been ripped in his blood, in his body by the stripes that were are literally removing the flesh and then imagine all the blood and all the mess in the flesh that was bad the dogs surrounded him the dogs were seeing meat the dogs were seeing food and that is what happens in essence but then do you know that whenever you seem like you're going through trouble whenever you seem like you're going through a lot of problems do you know most of the time you have dogs around you now this time the dogs are not literally the dogs but they are people who are waiting to see you go down so that they can eat what you have left behind. There are people who are excited when they think and see things are not working out very well for you and they are waiting gasping and saying when shall this happen so that we can take over his business when shall this happen so that we can take over his house or her house when can this happen so that we can go with the car there, there are those kinds of people they are called dogs around him and I'm praying that this week every dog that is waiting to see you go down may that dog be beaten and may that dog be disappointed may that dog disappear from your life today in Jesus name we don't want to see 
see any dog that is waiting for us to go down. No, 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 no. I don't want to see a dog that is waiting to see take uh, to see themselves away, waiting to take over my house or to waiting to take over my 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 cars or to take over my business or to take over my money and buy bank account. Those kinds of dogs, I cancel them in my life and I say no to them. They will not do that. They will not do that. And if there is any that is out there listening to my voice, may you be converted today because I will not accept you to do that. Now I don't even know why I'm saying all that. That's actually a by the way that was really not even in my notes at all but every dog out there that wants to take you down and wants to take your things we cancel them please somebody out there shout an amen just say amen because we don't want any dogs around you. and the bible says the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me and there are people who are watching there are people who are looking to see him coming down the some of them were just uh, some were actually enjoying and celebrating because they had actually said crucified him and then he says, and they pissed my hands and my feet. And they pissed my hands and my feet. That is probably the best thing that happened on that cross. That is probably one of the best things that happened on that cross. Of course, everything was very sad and very painful. But the truth of the matter is, the fact that these things were happening for a reason and for a purpose, that what gives me joy to know that this is not in vain. His shedding of blood, his dying on the cross, and later on getting uh, to resurrect, none of these things was in vain. It was all planned. It was all stretched by God himself. He had already prepared it for, prepared for it. And he knew that he's doing all this because of a reason. And the basic reason was to take us back to the original plan. And that is the plan that he already had with man. And that is the plan of living in Eden. God's idea of Eden was always in his mind and he always desired for us to go back there. So Jesus came literally to bring us back to that place. You will ask me, how is that so? Right now we are living on earth and how is that so? How come? How come? The truth is when you have an encounter with Christ and when you have received him and by faith you acknowledge these things and agree with him. Listen to me. There are things that will happen in your life that is that are going to amaze you and that's what I'm calling you, calling them the experience back in Eden. Eden. But that's not the point right now. Jesus shed his his hands were pierced. Why is that so? Is because God wanted to declare at that moment that whatever our hands find to do shall be blessed. He was also declaring that the works of our hands are blessed. My goodness, my goodness. That means everything I come out to do with my hands, it is blessed. Everything I come out to do, I am blessed as I touch it. I am blessed it. I'm blessed as I touch it. And that's why he says that whatever things you find to do, do it all with all your might. Why is that so? But because everything you're doing, as far as God is concerned, the very fact that he shed his blood from those hands, it basically means his hands shed the blood and my hands got to get blessed. My hands got to get blessed. That means today, whatever it is I do, be it in the village or be it in the city, I know I am blessed. I know my baskets are blessed. I know my storehouses are blessed. I know everything I do everywhere I bless. Today, with a lot of confidence, I can declare and say that I am above only and never beneath. I am the head and never the tail. Why is that so? Because as far as God is concerned, the things that have to do with my hands the things which probably would not have brought me victory as I do them with my hands the things which could not have brought me produce as I do with my hands the fact that the blood was shed on his hands it basically means these hands of mine are blessed I wanted to do an exercise right now look at your hands right now look at both of your hands and say you know what everything I do with these hands shall be blessed is it a business adventure you're having and you're doing it with your hands God will bless it is it an idea that has come up that you want to do God will bless it is it a job that you're doing somewhere God will bless you is it anything that you're putting your mind to do God, in essence, is going to bless you. Now, understand, and I've said it in many videos, it has nothing to do with your location. You could be where you know, were born and God will still bless you from there. Or you could have relocated to another place, another city, another town, another country, another somewhere else. It does not matter where it is you are as long as you understand that those hands, God 
those hands got the blood so that your hands can be blessed you will be blessed and you will prosper from the wherever it is that you go on now in the same scripture it goes on and says and he's he's he says look at this he says they pierced my hands and what else and they also pierced my feet what that basically means is that wherever my feet trend to stand on, wherever it is that I'm going, whatever it is that I'm doing, whatever it is that I'm trying to do or attempting to do, oh, as I go here and as I go there, it is blessed. He's saying, I am taking care of your movement. I am taking care of your directions. I will direct your footsteps wherever it is. I will not allow you to step on the wrong things. And listen to me, when the enemy comes to you in form of scorpions or in form of whatever other creature that he may come to you, you have been given the power with that feet or with those feet to actually trend on every scorpion and do what and crash. That means there is no negativity that is thrown your way that God is going to allow to a trait to you. Why is that so? Because he has already anointed your feet. He has already shed the blood on the feet so that everywhere you are stepping on, the only thing you're experiencing is victory. Are you having ideas to move to a certain area? I tell you the truth. God is going to walk with you and God is going to move with you because out of this experience on the cross, he was literally saying he has paved the way for you. You see, that is one of the things that bothers me when you are a Christian and you are struggling and the only thing you are thinking is about what the devil is doing to you and not realizing that the devil's issues have already been handled way, way, way before even you were born. Way, 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 way before even you started knowing what you are knowing right now. The devil's issues had already been sorted out. He says, I will bless your going out and I will bless your coming in. What does that tell you? It tells you that as you are walking towards out, God is together with you. As you are walking towards in, God is together with you. That means there are movements wherever you are moving because his feet shed blood. They were announcing to the devil and the demons on this planet that this son of mine, this daughter of mine, this person here that is listening to the sound of my voice, that wherever they go, they shall prosper and they shall be blessed. Is there any better news than that today? This is Wednesday morning. I wa if I were you, I would be rejoicing and getting excited. Why is that so? Because of realizing, you know what? Listen, my hands are blessed. As I go out to do my job today, I'm doing it with so much confidence because in my mind, I already know that I am blessed. Now, remember, this is all of faith vision. You have to have faith. You have to believe what I'm telling you right now. Because when you believe what I'm telling you, that it builds your confidence. It builds you so much so that you you have no you have no you don't delay or you don't feel reluctant in doing some things because you're already excited. You know what? By the way, I'm blessed. As you move and do whatever you're doing with your feet, as you move and in doing into business, moving into things, moving wherever, you're moving with confidence and with swiftness. That's why even the Bible says that he makes our legs like the legs and gives them the swiftness of a deer. Why is that so? Because God says to you, listen, the legs, the feet I have given you is so that you can dominate, so that you can have dominion, so that you can be swift, so that you can do things. You know, whatever your feet find and wherever your feet step, you shall possess. What does that tell me? Listen, that every time you're moving, every time you're doing whatever you're doing, have it in the back of your mind that I am not doing anything in vain. My movement is not in vain. Whatever I'm doing is not in vain. God has already declared a blessing over my life. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that beautiful? So don't sit there reluctantly and feeling like as though you have nowhere to go. You have everywhere to go because those feet are blessed. Some of you who are listening to me, probably you have been wanting, desiring to relocate to another place. You want to move to another place. That is where you have your feet. Start moving them. And as you move them, God is going to open doors for you. It's one thing for a door to be opened. And it's another thing for you to sit down and walk through that door. Don't forget that statement. It's one thing for you to have a door open and it's another thing for you to move your feet and move towards that door. I pray to you right now and I pray for you right now asking you, please don't sit, rise up, start moving towards a door that God has already opened for you. He desires to bless your movement. He desires to bless whatever it is that you're doing. And then finally, the Bible says in John chapter number 19, 34, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water gushed 
came out and immediately blood and water came out. Now it's important to notice that this particular moment, it was not just blood that came out. It was blood and water after he was pitched on the on the on the on the side and this was actually the last piecing this is the last moment he shed blood all the others are mentioned to you we started with the with the with the sweating of blood we went to the beards being plucked out we went to the thorns being put on his head we went to the piercing of the hands which i'm talking about today and the piercing of the feet and then fine and then with the the, the stripes on his back and then finally and ultimately we see the last one while he's hanging on the cross just before say he says it is finished just before he says it is over or just before in our language today before he says i have done it it is accomplished everything is now updated everything now has been updated from this moment going on forth we have a new version of everything just before he said those words the truth is blood and water gushed out. And what does blood and water stand for? The blood of what? Number one, the blood is talking about the redemption power of God. Number two, the water is symbolizing the word of God. So as the blood and water was actually gushing out, what in essence was saying is that from now henceforth, the word is gushing out and the blood has come to bring redemption. And that basically means in essence, my church is being birthed from today. This is a new day. The church is being born. The church that lives under redemption and the church that lives under the word. The church that is here to follow up to do the things that I have started doing right now. At that very moment, the church got born. It was the beginning of the birth of the church. Now listen to me, my friends. It is important for you to understand that this church is the strongest body that is walking on this planet today. It's important for you to understand there is no other body that has outlived things and this long like the church has done. People have come, they have tried to destroy it. People have come, they have tried to put it down. People have come, they have tried to do whatever it is they have tried to do. But it has turned uh, it has continued standing strong. It has stood strong. It has continued going on and on and on and on. And believe me you, it is going to continue going on and on and on and on. And believe me you, there is nothing as powerful as the body of Jesus Christ. It's, I'm so excited that I'm part of the church. Maybe you, I should challenge you. You are listening to me and you have never had that experience of being part of this body of Jesus Christ. All you need to do is to believe what Jesus actually did on that cross. God bless you so much and thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time to listen all the way to the end of this video. God bless you so much. Please subscribe if you have not already subscribed. And if you are listening for the first time, you can also let me know through, uh, by commenting there. Say amen to everything that I'm saying here. It will be good. And God bless you so much. If you are able to share this video, I would really appreciate. And look out for the videos that I did on Monday and on Tuesday so that you can connect with this Wednesday video. God bless you. And let's meet again tomorrow, same time, in this channel, in the next video. God bless you and bye-bye.